best 100 quid ever spent. Basically paying people to design new clothes for me is great. It looks good though, it looks comfy, it looks like good quality. Yeah, it is. Maybe you should buy it in our merch store. It does make me feel like such a knob though when I'm out there. I go into a bathroom in office and people see me wearing a t-shirt with my fucking face on it. It's like, no, no, I'm wearing it for work, man. I'm not much of a douche. Fine, let's talk about Stephen Hawking, I suppose. <laughs> Stephen Hawking was a guy who spent the majority of his life being referred to as the smartest man alive. A nickname I don't think Hawking minded, but would have probably preferred being used in tandem with one funny motherfucker. Something I say because Stephen Hawking, contrary to what you may believe, actually had a pretty cutting sense of humour. Well, you wouldn't think uh, theoretical physicists, especially ones who are in wheelchairs, wouldn't have that sort yeah. of humour. And especially ones who can't fucking talk. You're like, <laughs> contrary to like the hyper-anal, stuffy reputation... Reputation? Reputation oh, no. <laughs> of theoretical physicists um, that, like, you know, in the, I guess in the public consciousness and pop culture, Stephen Hawking was actually a pretty funny guy, and a lot of people who met him were surprised to learn mm -hmm. that um, he had a really, really biting and witty and sarcastic sense of humour. But not only did he love that shit, he also enjoyed fucking with people who didn't expect him to love that shit. Because Stephen Hawking did not give a single theoretical fuck. Have you got some of the examples of stuff he did? Oh, Stephen Hawking just fucking with people. My absolute favourite, number one with a bullet, has to be there was a long running rumour in like, you know, the world of science that Stephen Hawking will run over the toes of people he didn't like in his wheelchair and then play it off as an accident because he knew that nobody is going to yell at a guy in a wheelchair, especially when it's a guy in a wheelchair who was usually the guest of honour at the event they were holding. But I would like to point out that while Stephen Hawking did deny running over people's toes, he denied it in such a way where it kind of made it seem like he was being sarcastic because when he was asked about this in an interview, he says, is it true, Professor Hawking? I know. You, can, you don't have to comment if you don't want to, but I've heard that you run over people's toes if you disagree with them. And no, that's a, it's a vicious, malicious rumour, and, and I'll run over anyone who repeats it. So I'm going to guess the truth is somewhere in the middle, because there's no way that rumour came out of nowhere. And I'm going to presume that if he could have done so, Stephen Hawking would have been smirking as he typed that fucking out. Because it's just, it comes across as so sarcastic, doesn't it? And I love that about him, that even though he could speak with barely any emotion in his voice whatsoever, he could be sarcastic. And it somehow came across as even more sarcastic when he did so. It's great. Hey, Stephen Hawking, aren't you that physicist that invented gravity? Sure. Why not? If he uses his wheelchair to prank people, he must use the voice as well. Oh yeah, he fucking loved using his voice synthesizers to mess with people. And there's more confirmed reports of him doing this, because he, he himself admitted to it, and there's like first-hand accounts of people who witnessed him like using it to mess with people. And uh, one of the things he liked doing was leaving more pauses than necessary when typing out sentences, so the person would think he'd finished talking and then start talking himself only for him to interrupt them so they'd feel bad, which is just fucking beautiful, innit? He was well known for as well, like just not adjusting the volume so he could insult people and pretend he wasn't or say, oh, I made a mistake, I'm really sorry. Like I think once he was at a dinner party with one of the inventors of the hydrogen bomb, so, so, so Stephen Hawking did not like this man and during the dinner, at one of the quietest moments, his voice box just started shouting out, he is so stupid, he is so stupid, he is so stupid, he is so stupid, every time the guy tried to talk. And Stephen Hawking went, oh no, it's a mistake, I'm really sorry. Who's gonna try, who's gonna stand up and call him on that? You know, no You're one not. is. That's what, he knew that. So he knew that people are gonna treat me differently because I'm in a wheelchair, so I'm gonna take advantage of that fact, because fuck it, I'm in a wheelchair. Yeah. Like, if I, what else am I gonna do? I'm sat here all fucking day, I've already like, you know, change the way we think about theoretical physics. Fuck it, I'm going to dedicate at least some of my time to pissing off those people who are going to treat me with kit gloves just because they think, oh no, he's in a wheelchair. So I'm going to run over their toes and make it feel awkward. And you know what? I love that shit. Anyone who can take advantage of something like that just is like A plus in my fucking book. There was a great series of adverts put out by the British government, in fact, where they said, well, we need to remove the stigma from people who are disabled or have like whatever disadvantages. And they released a series of adverts where it's like, oh, a guy with one hand goes into a job interview. And it shows you from the perspective of the job interview of like, oh no, he goes out for the handshake. Oh my God, where's my hand? 
I'm only messing with you, mate. I shake with my left hand. People like um, they panic, don't they? And they yeah. just think. Yeah. And you overcompensate and try, and then you, tr you end up treating the person differently, which comes across as more fucking patronising. But I do like the idea of people with those disadvantages using them to fuck with people by taking advantage of that thing people have in their head of like, oh no, I can't. I've got to be polite. I've got to be nice to this like guy in a wheelchair. And Stephen Hawking's like, yeah, I'm gonna run over his toes. So to bring it back to Stephen Hawking, um, one of my favourite facts about him is that he could type, I think, eight words per minute, which you would think would greatly limit someone's ability to say, like, dole out witty one-liners or comebacks. But no, Stephen Hawking, as you might expect for a guy who could write fucking books from that wheelchair, planned ahead and he would write out one-liners and comebacks ahead of time and bust them out to dunk on people who just didn't know how to deal. Do you have an example of some of the stuff he used to say? Well, I think my favourite one is he was giving a lecture to a group of students and a young girl nervously stood up and went to the microphone and said, uh, Professor Hawking, I was just wondering if you would comment on um, the cosmological impact of Zane leaving One Direction. And you think at this point, like, most other people in that situation would, like, you know, say thank you for the question, but that's not relevant, or they'd, like, politely ask the person to sit down, or maybe even, like, make fun of the young girl. No, Stephen Hawking... He sat there, and a few seconds later, the response came back. Finally, a question about something important. Finally, a question about something important. <laughs> and he used that as a jumping off point to talk about there being an idea in theoretical physics about there being multiple realities and different versions of our own universe, in which there would be uh, versions of One Direction that had not broken up, and in one of which there must be a reality or a universe where that young girl was married to Zane. And you know what? That's fucking adorable, <laughs> isn't it? Like, the fact that he's in a fucking wheelchair, can type eight words per minute, and he still manages to come out with that fucking answer while also weaving in a little nod to the original question while also making that little girl feel good. That's awesome. But here's the thing, though, Nisha, because withering one-liners and awesome comebacks weren't just the only thing in Stephen Hawking's comedic repertoire, because he also loved practical jokes. Of course. Of course he fucking did. And do you want to know what the best practical joke he ever pulled is? Go on. He threw a party for time travellers. But what he did is he announced the party the day after he threw it. You're probably thinking, oh, it's probably a joke he said in an interview, or it's just something he put in a press release to advertise a new book. But no, according to people who knew him, he got champagne and put it on ice and got canapes and all that bullshit and sat in the room for an hour. And then wait, and after the hour, obviously, he got all the food cleared away and they announced it the next day and said, I was really disappointed because nobody turned up. <laughs> what a shame. I was hoping a future Miss Universe was going to step through the door. <laughs> Just throwing a party for time travellers, man. And he went to, he bought champagne. That's Aww. fucking awesome. But just to prove a point, so you never know. Uh, he appeared on The Simpsons, didn't he? Yeah, he did, a few times, and he would report later in his life that um, people know me more as the man from The Simpsons than they do for my work as a theoretical physicist. And I don't mind, because I love that show. Don't feel bad, Lisa. Sometimes the smartest of us can be the most childish. Even you? No, not me. Never. And as you might imagine, given everything else I've said today about his love of humour and jokes, um, he really did enjoy being on The Simpsons. And it's reported that whenever he happened to be in LA for a conference or a lecture or something like that, he would randomly turn up to the studio and sit in on script readings. And the staff, obviously, this is Stephen fucking Hawking, of course he can come in. And he would just sit in the back of the room listening and sometimes suggest jokes of his own, which were, according to the writers, like, pretty fucking funny. Yeah. So they said, like, yeah, he's, he's in there and he's sitting up with some of like, the finest comedy writers in the business and he's holding his fucking own. He's dropping all sorts of lines and jokes and all that crap. And they said, every now and again, we just have someone from reception say, um, Stephen Hawking is here. Is he recording an episode today? Said, no. But let him in. And he'd just wheel himself up and just sit there and just, like, you know, enjoy the jokes and he'd join the banter and all that shit. And he was the only person, apparently, as well, they let do it. It's a lot of the writers of The Simpsons, I think Futurama as well, he'd turn up for some of theirs, because um, a lot of the staff on Futurama were physicists and mathematicians themselves. I think there's a, a line from one of the producers saying, oh, it's the smartest um, collection of writers ever brought together for a cartoon. And he'd turn up some of theirs and just shoot the shit with them for a couple hours and then go to his lecture or whatever in the evening. But he knew that, I'd like to think though, that he would secretly just accept lecture offers for the LA so he could go to the Simpsons offices and hang out. 
uh, to bring my own opinion into it a little bit, I think one of the reasons that Stephen Hawking liked hanging out with the Simpsons writers is because they just treated him like another comedian. They spoke to him like he was just like, you know, just offering lines like there weren't anyone else, they offered him feedback, criticism, they didn't treat him with kid gloves or anything like that. And he said, right, well, I respect him so much that there is nothing they can do with my character that I will object to, save for um, one joke they suggested where he was drunk with Homer. He said, I don't agree with that, but anything else you want to do with my character, any situation you want to put me in, I'm happy with it. Which is why there are jokes in there, right? I'm like stealing theories from other scientists, which is continued into future armor, where he also steals Fry's idea, like he did Homer's. I call it a hiking hole. No fair! I saw it first! Who is a journal of quantum physics going to believe? And he, I think one of the things he loved the most was like the boxing glove that they put into his fucking wheelchair, which he used to joke about during his speeches. He'd say, oh yeah, uh, most of you know me from The Simpsons. Um, luckily, I don't have a boxing glove in my uh, wheelchair, although I'm working on it right now. <laughs> it's like, yes, fucking yes, Stephen. Fucking get on it, lad. If you are looking for trouble, you found it. Yeah, just try me, you... Oh! And for anyone wondering, yes, that's why Stephen Hawking ended up having helicopter blades hidden within his wheelchair in that one Simpsons episode, because he just didn't give a fuck what they did. Help! So sticking with the idea of people that most would assume would be quite serious, of having like a really wicked sense of humour, are there any other celebrities or famous people um, who have something similar that spring to mind for you? I guess you could say o Obama. Oh man, I mean, you wouldn't really Obama. expect a president to be. Yeah, like the, the esteem of the office, like the, yeah. the weight and the, like the, the mantle you have to carry. And then there's all the pictures of him, like pretending to be Spider Man in the office with kids and shit. Or the one of him, like, is someone getting weighed and he's putting his like, foot on the scale so they think they're like 40 stone or some shit like that. So it just shows like. They can just have a laugh, they're just down to earth. It yeah, just makes them more human, I think. We spoke about it in another video. He used to play basketball with a lot of his secret service and all that shit. And he'd get annoyed if they didn't foul him. <laughs> he says, I'm, the, I'm, not, I'm not the president on the court, I'm Barrack. Fucking bring it. And there's a lot of stuff people say, yeah, he's really down to earth and he'd speak to just anyone. Like, I think, in fact, the custodians came in. It's so, like, empty his bin. He'd talk to them and say, oh, hello, Mr. President. So, how are you today? And you don't expect to hear stories about someone just in that position of power, just being that normal, I suppose. Well, similar to Obama, the Queen is apparently quite funny behind the scenes, but she doesn't really showcase it that much, because obviously when she's in public, she's the regent, she has to you know, carry herself with a certain um, level of decorum. But when people manage to catch like, you know, private, intimate moments, she's quite funny, according to people who I know would have that experience. Like there's the, the famous video of them bringing the crown jewels in. Uh, for, like, during an interview yeah. and like the, the interviewer's like oh my god it's the crown jewels and they bring him in with like silk gloves and put it down in front of her and obviously the queen it's my fucking crown so that's picking at it with her fingers <laughs> and pointing to the various jewels on it and just picks it up like it's nothing and this might be a story about her or the queen mother I forget who the person was but there was um, it was an open secret that a lot of like her personal like you know servants and assistants were gay and they're having a conversation once like, oh when you old queens are uh, having Finish having a laugh. This one wants a drink. Get me a gin and tonic. It's like, yeah, go on, queen. When it was like the Olympics or something. Oh, yeah. She did yeah. the skydive thing. She didn't do the skydive. But, but she like, uh, did a, pretended to do yeah, it or something so like made people out. People didn't watch the Olympics 2012. And the queen was asked. Obviously, you're the queen, this enduring symbol of Britain. Uh, you need to be involved in some way. Would you like to do a skit with Daniel Craig? And she said, yeah, okay then whatever, and turned up, and she did the skit. She turned up for a day of filming and hung out with James Bond. It's fucking awesome. So oh, man. As well, there's that story where a wedding was happening in London. They invited the Queen as a laugh. Said, oh, we're getting married tomorrow, um, Your Majesty. We thought you might want to check in. We heard you're doing a visit nearby. And the letter got through to her somehow by one of her aides, and she said, oh, I'll go. I'll turn up. And she did, and she turned up to their fucking wedding. Oh, imagine that. Yeah, it was only for like 10 minutes to say hello. Yeah. But she was like, well, you know what, fuck it, I'm the queen, I can do what I want. Oh, the thinking God. that someone invited the queen to their fucking wedding, she turned up She turned up for the banter. You know what, that's my, that's a woman I'm proud of my fucking money right there. Turns up for the bants. Queen of bants. Oh, man, she is. <laughs>